normal chicken with some boneless, skinless chicken thighs that are brined in the Hasty Bake Dang Good Brine. We're going to make skewers out of them, put them on the grill, top them with some Mediterranean flavors. It's going to be absolutely outstanding. But as always, you want to brine first. Get all that moisture in, break it down, make it super tender. That little bit of extra work makes this recipe way over the top. Start off with a cup of that dang good brine. Do about a gallon of water, maybe a little less. Now because this chicken is so small, you don't actually have to brine this for more than about 30 or 40 minutes. You're gonna get that brine mixed up. Brine is basically salt and sugar and herbs and some extra, you know, fun, yummy ingredients to just make everything kind of over the top. But you wanna make sure that salt and sugar dissolve in the water because that's what actually works to break down that meat. In the brine go the boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Now you can do this with chicken breast, chicken legs, anything you want, but because we're making skewers out of these, I like using chicken thighs. When you cut them up small, the thighs have enough fat that they don't dry out on the grill, so it just lasts a lot longer. You can get more smoke and more flavor in the thighs without worrying about drying them out, having them be real tough. We'll let the brine go to work. We're gonna fire up that grill. All right, so I'm gonna form my spice base that we're gonna be putting on this chicken right now. And to do that, I'm gonna be doing about a tablespoon of cumin. Not exact, because we're really just talking about kind of a sprinkle seasoning or a rub. The one thing you don't wanna do is overpower it with a curry powder. So we're gonna go about one tablespoon of each of these and we'll do half a tablespoon of the curry powder. I personally love smoked paprika. I think it adds a lot of great color, a lot of great flavor. So I go a little bit heavier on that. Now the curry powder. A little goes a long way with curry powder. And some kosher salt. Now we're gonna season with black pepper to taste, but I know off the bat that I'm gonna use a little bit, so we'll put about maybe half a teaspoon in for right now. All right, that's it. Stir that up. We're gonna get this chicken to the seasoning, throw it on the grill. Right, this chicken's come out of the brine. I'm just gonna slather it with a couple things that'll add tons and tons of flavor to it before we even put the seasoning on it. First thing is just gonna be a, a kind of a standard slather with olive oil. I don't mind going a little heavy on this because it's gonna fall right off on the grill, but it'll do a real good job of making that seasoning stick. All right, next thing is gonna be some lemon juice. I'm probably using about two or three tablespoons here. Again, it's gonna come off. That brine has done a really good job of making chicken that was already tender even more tender. Not that raw chicken's that appealing, but it is nice and tender in this bowl. And then we're gonna come in with about maybe a teaspoon or more of minced garlic. Okay. Once I get all that coating all the chicken, come back in with our seasoning. As long as you don't have too much moisture in the bowl, this is gonna form a really cool kind of a seasony peppery paste that's gonna stick on these chicken thighs when you throw them on the grill. Now you can grill different pieces of the chicken on the grill, you know, on a skewer, but one of the reasons I love chicken thighs is that because of the fact that they have a little extra fat on them, they stand up to that heat really, really well. And you can kind of overcook them as far as a safe temperature goes, and it's not gonna hurt anything. So normally I take chicken breast to 160, maybe 165 degrees, and you can pull chicken thighs at that temp, but you can also take them all the way up to 180 degrees and it's not gonna hurt anything. So you got a lot more forgiveness happening when you use chicken thighs on a skewer on the grill. Keep moving them around until you know that every one of them are really well covered with that paste. You don't wanna waste any of that seasoning and leave it in the bowl. All right. Now some people think you may have to soak the skewers before you throw them on the grill. If you're doing something small like vegetables or smaller pieces of meat, probably a good idea because it'll keep those skewers from burning up. But when you're doing something as wet and as large as these chicken thighs are, they cover most of the wood, so you really don't have to worry about soaking them ahead of time. 
kind of just want to thread them on. Now you could throw this directly on the grill and that would be completely fine. When I'm doing multiple thighs like this in this style, I like to skewer them because then I can rotate a bunch of them at the same time. All right, beautiful pile of raw chicken. We're gonna go and throw this on the grill. That hasty bake's fired up to about 350 degrees. I'm gonna put it directly over the fire. I'm gonna have that fire box in the bake position. I don't wanna sear them off too quick. I wanna let that chicken cook on the inside as well, get a little bit of that smoke. We're gonna prepare an awesome sauce that we're gonna serve with this. chicken get to bacon we're gonna jump on this sauce all right we got that chicken on the grill it's getting some wonderful smoke flavor to it some really good char which is gonna help when you throw some sauce on it because it's gonna stick through that sauce we're gonna go ahead and make the sauce right now this is a tahini sauce with some garlic and some lemon in it really easy to make you're gonna take four lemons a little trick on softening those up you just rolling them before you get to cutting them so we get all of that juice kind of nice and ready to go we're gonna cut them in half Again, this is not an exact science. Measure with your heart. We're putting all the juice into some kind of a blender. You can use a, a mini bullet. You can use something like this battery power one. You can just use a traditional blender. If you're super fancy, you can use a Vitamix. Season all isn't gonna hurt because we're actually gonna strain it when we're all done. Speak about measuring with your heart. Now we're using garlic and we're gonna use as much of this as we want. Realistically, you're probably talking about 20 cloves or so. I will count those out, but I may go for more because who doesn't love more garlic, right? Five, 10, 15, 20, yeah, there's 20 for you, about as What we're looking to do here is just kind of create a puree. Now, if you pulse it a few times and it's not getting thick enough, you can always add more garlic because the balance of the lemon juice and the garlic is what's going to create your paste. Hit it a few times. That's getting better. All right, so we're going to put this into a big bowl. We're going to strain it out. Then we're going to add our other ingredients. If you have some kind of a strainer, colander, something like that that's gonna strain a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. Really what we're looking for here is just the liquid. So we're gonna strain it out. I'm gonna take the back side of a spoon and push it all through. I wanna get all the solids out and just get that nice liquid juice that's down in there from the garlic and the lemon. have down there is all that juice that we get to mix with the other ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and add a teaspoon of cumin. Cumin's a really cool seasoning that adds just a really earthy tone to it and when we're talking about Mediterranean style dishes you're always talking about earthy tones to your food. So there's cumin. We're going to whisk that up but before we do here's the fun secret ingredient. We're gonna throw some Greek yogurt in. Now, if you can find a tahini sauce at your local grocery store, that's really good to use. We're actually gonna kind of make a makeshift tahini sauce here. We're gonna go with 10 ounces of Greek yogurt, which this is a 30 ounce tub, so we'll go about a third of this Greek yogurt. Remember, because you're making a sauce, you can always test as you go. If it needs something, you can always add it. Remember, you can't take away, so make sure you're doing stuff in proportion. It's about good on that Greek yogurt. And the toasted sesame seed oil, which is, that's what this is, is gonna be the thing that makes this kind of taste like a tahini. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go about a fifth of a cup right now. 
and then we'll mix it up and see if we like the taste of it. If not, we can always add more. I'm gonna add some cold water just to thin it out a little bit. And it's gonna need salt. I'm not quite sure how much, so I'll add a little bit right now, and we can always add more later. Let's give that a shot. Good. Use a little bit more salt. And I'm actually gonna add just a little bit more cumin too. It's not gonna hurt. Depending on the brand of sesame oil, sometimes they get a little overpowering, so you kinda wanna balance out. Again, you just kinda keep building until you find the right consistency. You can always add, you can't always take away. Much better. Check on our chicken real quick. Ooh, it's looking good. If you continue to rotate it, you get a nice char on every single side. Now there's kind of two breaking points for chicken. 165 is what is the safe temperature and people recommend to cook your chicken to. But there's a nice breaking point around the 175 to 180 degree on dark meat chicken like boneless, skinless thighs, where everything gets really tender and wants to fall apart. That's what we're hunting for. So I'm probably about five degrees shy of that. We're gonna give this probably another two or three minutes to go. We'll call it off the rest. That's pretty chefy for some barbecue folks, huh? This is gonna be absolutely awesome. It's gonna have that real smoky, earthy tone that we got from the seasoning. It's gonna have that nice, light, bright Mediterranean tone that we got from the sauce. I'm digging in. Oh my goodness. That is hard to beat. The cool thing about that is you can do so many different things with it. You put it over rice, you put it over couscous, you can put it over quinoa, put it in a salad, put it in a pita, put it on some naan. I mean, the options are absolutely endless. The flavors are bright and earthy all at the same time. I hope you guys copied this recipe because I'm telling you, you're gonna to wanna to try this. Make sure you get the char on that edge of the chicken because that really adds a lot of that smoky pop to it. But man, you can't get enough of that seasoning. Not overpowering with curry. It's just a really, really well-balanced recipe, real refreshing for summer. If you want something that's light, still has got a lot of flavor on it. Give this a shot, I guarantee you're gonna love it. Thanks for being with us.